Good morning and welcome to St. Cross Live. We are glad that you have decided to join us for services today. The most important thing for us to say in our welcome is Happy New Year, because today is Advent 1 and it is the new year of the church. And we are glad that you are starting your new year outright by joining us for worship. As always, a few quick notes before we begin. You can find the service bulletin at stcross.org slash live. If you're a newcomer, please, at that same uh, link, you can click on the newcomer tab and send in an electronic card, and we will reach out so you can get to know us better and we can learn about you. If you would like to give to the mission and ministry as we approach the final month of 2020, and we want to be sure that we end um, fiscally sound, you may send in your gift at stcross.org slash give. And of co course, most important, as we approach this time, we ask that if you need prayers, you send those in to us at stcross.org slash pray. Thank you. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came down to visit us in great humility that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. When the Lord comes, he will bring light to the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purpose of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we we confess confess that we have have sinned sinned against against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, done, and and by what what we have have left left undone. We have have not not loved you with with our whole heart. We have have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are are truly sorry, and and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have have mercy mercy on us and and forgive us, that that we may delight in your will and walk in your your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 Lord, open our lips, and And our our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory Glory to to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the the Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit as as it was in the beginning, is is now, and and will be forever. Amen. Please join us in saying the Venite. Come, Come, let us sing to the the Lord. Let us us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth. You that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Shine the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be anchored? Despite the prayers of your people, you have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. And our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The Son of Man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. 
the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any gods beside you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on his name, who attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hands of our inequity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus said, But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. 
Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will be coming in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. In the name of one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Amen. Finally, finally, the first candle on the Advent wreath is lit, and we hear that great collect from the first Sunday of Advent that calls us to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. The single solitary flame that I see on the wreath today gives me hope as I know that each week we will add another flame, getting brighter and brighter as we count down to the great feast day when we celebrate the advent of the eternal life, the birth of Jesus. As I do every year in the time right before Advent begins, I wonder and I pray what I need to focus on for this season, and on only what do I need to focus on, but what does St. Cross need to focus on this season? The one question that kept coming back to me is, how do we balance the gospel of today to keep awake, to pay attention to the ministry of Jesus that we are to follow? How do we balance that when we're tired, exhausted, worn out, and worn thin from a year of plague and politics and people and masks and lack of paper goods again, and safety measures imposed and safety measures challenged, holidays different than what we would wish? How do we keep awake when we think that we cannot take one more day of having to wear this mask or not being able to hug someone? How do we carry on when every commercial tells us to focus on our own needs and don't worry about others? How do we at this time, especially when we would gather as families, how do we remain in relationship with those whose politics don't just disagree with ours, but with whom we think we are diametrically opposed? As a community, as a country, we're tired. And we are reading more and more about the real effects of COVID fatigue, about the emotional work that drains us as we negotiate a crisis. For you see, constant crisis is overwhelming. And as we've been in crisis mode for these many months, our vision has been narrowed. That's actually how a brain in crisis works. It keeps us focused on what will keep us alive on what will get us through this crisis, which apparently we all think that toilet paper is what will get us through the crisis. But truly, as our brains are processing going, what is going on, and we hunker down 
it is possible that perhaps even unintentionally that we ignore the greater needs of the world around us as we engage in our own flight or fight survival response. We have this idea that if I can't survive, I can't help others. And while in one sense that is true, is that really the case? Is that what our faith tells us? Is this all I can do is take care of myself narrative, the placation from our stressed out brains, is that what we need to wake up from? It is easy, oh so easy, with our crisis fatigue to fall asleep to the needs of the greater community. And yet the irony of today's gospel is that Jesus is teaching the disciples, this isn't from the beginning of Mark, this is from right before his arrest. And he is telling them, no, in fact, he is warning the disciples to stay awake, for they do not know the hour when the master will come. In the evening, such as when Jesus will share his last supper with them, or at midnight when the disciples are asleep in the garden and Jesus is arrested, or at cock crow when Peter denies Jesus three times, or at dawn when Jesus is sentenced to be crucified. Jesus knows exactly the danger that comes when we fall asleep from crisis fatigue. When we fall asleep, our faith weakens. When we fall asleep, we cannot hear that gospel call to help others. When we fall asleep, our baptismal vows to strive to respect the dignity of every human being appears as a dream, not as a real-life invitation. You see, in the midst of crisis, when we most want to curl up and pull the covers over our heads out of sheer exhaustion, we need to remember that our God is constant. When our eyelids feel heavy, our faith calls us not to close them, but to view the world differently. The gospel calls us not only to keep awake, but to rest secure in the knowledge that we have the resources to respond to the needs around us. We have the alarm clock of our faith to rouse us, to inspire us, to give us hope and energy, to remind us that we all have enough if we dig deep and just have the faith to share what we have. And how is it that we are to stay awake? The first way we stay awake is through constant prayer. Pray for physical and emotional stamina. Pray for the light of Christ that we lit this morning on the Advent wreath. Pray for that light to illumine the ways in which you and I and St. Cross are being called to be God's hands and God's heart in our greater community. Pray for those who don't have the resources that you do. And pray for those who have more. Pray that we can find a way so that no person goes hungry and every child has the same access to the same level and quality of education and that every family has a roof over their head and pray for the ability in this time of Advent to stay awake and cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. And the second way we stay awake in this Advent season is to act. St. Cross continues to act, even in these times of being dispersed church. Now that the first asylum couple we sponsored has integrated into our country, we have been asked to sponsor another. 
Our vestry agreed a month ago to keep the basement apartment where the former couple lived as a place for future refuge for families or perhaps a refugee person in need. As St. Cross has been providing shelter for those in need for over 50 years on our property. With your help, St. Cross will care for the man who is coming to our country seeking refuge. With your help, Laundry Love continues to offer assistance with monthly laundry care kits. With your help, Neighbor to Neighbor puts gift cards in those kits so that people can still have a meal every month. Now, Giving Tree, Giving Tree is seasonal, and it could still use some help with some donations to make sure that the families we sponsor all have a gift under the tree and some food on their table in this holiday season. If any or all of these possibilities of how we are God's hands and how we are God's heart, if any of these have got your alarm sounding, or perhaps you realize you've been hitting the snooze button during COVID, I urge you to remember Jesus' call to stay awake, to be ready. When we are least in control of life's circumstances, that's when we can find ourselves actually most blessed by helping someone else. And while our church-wide program of dreaming throughout 2019 and into 20 has been turned on his head, the truth is as followers of Jesus, we're used to things being turned on their head. For such is the way of following Jesus. From our later in 2020 perspective, look for new ways in which our community needs help. And together, together we can find a way to respond to the deep and great needs of our community. And in doing so, we will find that light of Christ growing brighter and brighter around us week by week, filling us all with the hope and the joy that we are so desperately searching for in our dreams. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. 
Let Let your your people people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, and all the world. For For only only in you can can we we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And And guide guide us in the way of justice justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your Your saving saving health health among among all nations. nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor Nor the the hope hope of the the poor poor be taken taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And and sustain sustain us us with with your your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in the glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 As witness to your light and truth, we come to you in prayer, O Lord. Infuse the heart of your church with your spirit and focus it on your mission. Renew your people and their leaders as they serve your purpose. Remind us continually whose we are. Turn the hearts and actions of all the world's leaders to justice and peace. We pray for our federal, state, and local leaders. Open our eyes to what is going on around us. Open our hearts to our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Move us to open our hands in love when they are in need and to stand up for them when they are oppressed. We pray for those suffering from natural disasters, from unjust economies, from hunger and want. We know people around us who are suffering from anxiety, scarcity, illness and loneliness. Some of them we know and most are unknown to us. We ask that you assure them of your presence and sustain them with your grace. We pray for those you name now. Our hearts break when someone whom we love dies. Today, we mourn those we name now. May we be a comfort as we walk with those who grieve. Come, Lord Jesus, do not delay. Give new courage to your people who trust in your love. By your coming, raise us to share in the joy of your kingdom on earth as in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join us in saying the general thanksgiving. Almighty Almighty God, God, Father Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give give you you humble thanks. thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all of the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love 
and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. As we await our coming Savior, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Thank you again for joining us for worship today at St. Cross. A few quick announcements for the good of our community. Please do continue to read your weekly emails for giving tree updates, de uh, deadlines, and uh, donation possibilities. We would like to remind you that the kids will be coming by today. Uh, families are welcome to come by today after service to pick up their Advent bags. And we would like you to know that longest night, for those of us, which I would imagine would be many of us who are, who are having feelings of sadness, frustration, loss, disappointment during the holidays, please join us Wednesday, December 9th at 7 p.m. for our longest night service. And it's time to start announcing the pageant. Yes, we will have the pageant. It will be Sunday, December 22nd at 5 p.m. It will be broadcast right here on our live channel, and we can't wait to show you Social Distanced Pageant coming to you soon. 
Um, also, if you check our website at stcross.org, you will see the listing for all of our holiday, our, our Christmas services throughout this Advent season. And the last thing that I'm going to end with is Women's Bible Study is doing a special Bible study for the four weeks of Advent. It is looking at Maya Angelou's poetry, and it goes with the readings for the week. So please do join us, uh, and if you would like to know more, please email me. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful start to your happy church new year.